people, so we're fine. So, so guys, we're recording this so that it can be uploaded to our YouTube channel. Excellent. Well, everyone, thank you very much for joining us today. If, My name is J. Robert Parker. I'm sorry, uh, I'm supposed to do that. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I'm <laughs> I do that for you. <laughs> yeah. No, that, that's the only time I talk during the entire thing, really. I mean, after four, I talk a lot before four. So, right. So, um, okay. Thank you, everyone, for joining in. <laughs> I'm Sid, and uh, and uh, this is a session on dealing with trauma we have here today with us, and I'm very grateful to have him here, J. Robert Parker. And, uh, see, now, see, this is the part where I read out your uh, read out that bit about you, and wouldn't you rather someone else did that? So, uh, uh, Robert uh, J. Robert Parker is a union certified master hypnotist and the owner of Twin Ravens Hypnotherapy and Research. That, uh, that I remember talking to him about the part and research because he really likes to read a lot, research a lot, and get into the depth of any topic that that he that interests him really. And, and what I have after spending some time with him, what I realize is that the things that interest him are very human in nature. He's very, very interested in different aspects of our humanity and exploring the mechanics and the, and the, and, and the deeper aspects of those. So his, Parker, uh, his mission statement is simple, to be the light for those of us who cannot see the guide for the, and, to see, and to be the guide for those of us who have lost the way and the peace for those of us who have forgotten. And he is available for lectures and interviews in both private and group sessions. So during this session, Robert is going to explain to us the mechanics of trauma and our subconscious reaction to it. So that's very helpful because a lot of the time, I'm not sure we actually understand trauma or how exactly it works, what is the structure of it, and so on, which will help us to deal with it much uh, better. And he'll also take us through a guided meditation after that and give us some tools to overcome our hurts and trauma. And in the case of, for example, as Prachi was saying, she might be able to use it to help somebody else. And there's also a handout which he's already shared with me. That handout has been uh, posted to the Community Healers group where it's available as a PDF. You can download it. And I will update the YouTube link of, uh, of this session later on as it's, uploaded, uh, as it's updated in the same uh, post. And now, over to you, Robert. All yours now. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that wonderful introduction. I'm not accustomed to such things. Well, again, it's nice meeting all of you. Um, so trauma. It is... It's an interesting topic and it's, it's almost in a way difficult to, to really say where to begin. A, a lot of us experience trauma and even those of us that haven't necessarily had to deal with it directly, absolutely know people who do. And being close to somebody dealing with trauma is often just as involved as being the one who received the trauma themselves. And those of you who are here in support of somebody who's been traumatized, bless you, you're awesome. So one of the things, first and foremost, that I really like to make clear that goes a long way towards understanding trauma and understanding where we come from with trauma is that we are at the, at the same place that we were when this event happened. So for example, let's say that something unfortunate happened to you when you were a child, say nine, 10 years old. Well, even into the future, the, your remembrance of this is as that nine or 10 year old, it is with that same emotional maturity and emotional intelligence and will remain as such until this trauma is readdressed. And there are many ways to readdress trauma. Um, of course, being a hypnotherapist, the tool that I have at my disposal to help readdress trauma is hypnosis and hypnotherapy. Um, and the way, the way that that's done, generally, is as I said, that when, as we remember our trauma is kind of where we keep it. And even if you weren't a child, even if you were a full grown adult, then even then you, you were in a place of fear. You were not thinking logically and calmly. So you remember it that way. Now, how does trauma affect you? That's, that's really a question that 
needs to be asked. It is very varied. Trauma can have physical sensations associated with it. The, the results of your trauma, whenever the memory of such is triggered, can cause some very severe physiological reactions. Pains in the stomach and, and anywhere in the body, really. Pain is often transmitted uh, to the body from emotional sensations. The body is, or the mind is unable to process those emotions fully, so it moves it to the body. Uh, within my training, we refer to such things as body syndromes. And it's a very common side effect of trauma. We also have all of the mental effects that come with trauma. And that's really where the varied effects come in. It could manifest as a great deal of things from a fear of being near people to a hypersexuality to violence. And it's that is that those are only three of the huge number of reactions people can have when they're traumatized. And part of the problem that that comes up, and I I can only speak to to my country. I am in America right now, but I believe this applies everywhere you go. And that society's view of trauma and what even is defined as that is very inconsistent and unsupportive. Um, it's people, you may feel sometimes when you're traumatized that because of the perception of what has traumatized you, that society will judge you or brush you off. Um, it's very important that we accept someone's trauma, including our own. And what I mean by that is, let's say you have been through the fire. You've been through all these terrible things and you've made, but you have a friend whose cat died and they're devastated, more devastated than you've ever been through all of your traumas and all of your pains. And your first instinct based upon your personal experience would be to kind of write that off where trauma and traumatizing things are such a personal experience that yes, that person was very traumatized. and We can't let our own personal lens affect the way that we re out, reach out to people when they're in pain. Just because we are able to endure perhaps even what they've endured and not been so harmed by it doesn't mean that they're the same as well. So empathy is absolutely needed. And before I, I open up for a couple of questions before the group meditation and go on to the group meditation. Um, it's, it's very important that I, anyone who has been traumatized that has experienced this, that knows anyone that has experienced this, it is so important that you reach out for help that you not let your own internal dialogue prevent you from reaching out for help. Um, many of my clients that I see come to me with traumas and fears. Those are, that's my specialty that they've dealt with for decades sometimes because they didn't really know what they could do proactively to address this. And, and what I often say is when you have a toothache, you go to a dentist. When you're sick, you go to a doctor. When you have emotional pain, who do you go to? Because some people talk therapy, it's not for them. Some people, other types of therapies aren't for them. Some people come to hypnotherapy and all that matters is if you have this pain, you don't endure it on your own. You reach out for help to 
friends, to family, to professionals, that no matter what the societal view for trauma is, that isn't my view. That's, that is not, it is not a healer's place to judge someone's pain. And it is, it, truth be told, it's not anyone's place to judge anyone's pain. And that's a very important thing to remember as we go through life. Now, before I go into the guided meditation, which the goal for this is to give you some relaxation, to give you some tools to help, help live with this trauma, and maybe to help see it for a strength. One of the interesting turns of phrase that is used is the gifts of trauma, which seems like such a strange thing to say but what that means is when we have undergone something difficult when we've undergone something traumatic there's nothing that can be done to change that but what can be done is we can alter the way that we move forward and the more difficult and the more traumatic an event is the stronger you are for having survived it and for having moved past it and those are the gifts, those strengths that you're able to find within yourself that allow you to be a survivor, that allow you to be here today listening to me. So here for a couple minutes, I would like to open the floor up to any questions before we get started. Sid? Yep, my question is a lot of the time when we find someone has obviously gone through trauma, perhaps that it was it is, might be public knowledge and all that, they tend to be closed about it. They don't really open up and and uh, even the slightest display of uh, it, it, it uh, could trigger them. That display could be concern, that display could be empathy, that any number of uh, things could trigger them. So how exactly would you suggest uh, the traumatized be approached in from a therapeutic point of view by a loved one, a relative, a friend, anyone? Well, as you say, sometimes people have negative reactions when their trauma is addressed or spoken of. And that's really something that you do have to respect. Um, if someone is not ready discuss their trauma you cannot force them but what you can do for them is support um in the places that they are having a hard time simply offer them support when such time even if it's infrequent that they wish to talk hold space for them so they can talk it's it's very much on this person who has been traumatized timeline as to when they wish to open up that it's not for us to decide when it is time for this person to to deal with this trauma that the best thing we can do is support somebody and let them know that should they be ready to open up about that that they have this this ear and these options and that will go a long way to helping somebody and eventually they will take you up on that option. Thank you. Thank you for that. Anyone else, we have any questions to ask any before at all? we begin on the guided meditation? Please go ahead. Anyone, anyone at all? I promise I'll answer. <laughs> and you don't need to switch on the camera. Yeah, you don't have to switch. As long as I can hear your voice, I still have to know what you're saying in order to answer your question. That's still a thing. Yeah. Hi, Robert. Hi. Hi. Um, I'm Naveen. Just Sorry. a basic query. Is it okay to feel uh, anxiety and nervousness after having experience of around 80, 20 years? Still, I believe yes. I still have the same uh, kind of uh, anxiety and the other issues. When whenever I go or whenever I will, I'm into a new situation or which is not normal or something different than the normal routine. Okay, very good question. That allows me to touch on a few things. So, 
uh, this trauma was experienced a long time ago and you still have many of the same anxieties and negative effects associated with it. And yes, although I don't want to use the word normal to describe that, it is not unusual because if this trauma has gone unresolved, if we still have the subconscious associations and memories affiliated with this trauma, yes, it is completely completely feasible that we still feel its negative effects years down the line even though maybe the original trauma isn't as clear it's not as vivid a memory because it happened so long ago your subconscious still remembers the negative effects will still be present until there is the, the effort made to to resolve that to address the symptoms of the trauma and in this case this is anxiety so it's not it's not unusual um and i would encourage you to to seek out some a helping hand like i said before it's very important we, we seek out help when we need it and accept help uh if we need it so thank you very much for that question. I hope that helped answer it. Anyone else? Anyone? Uh, um, hi. Hi, this is Kirti here. Hi, Robert. Hi, Sid. Hi, how are you? Yeah. So uh, I'm good. Thank you. I have a question. Uh, more than a question, I'd like to actually know your views about a particular thing, Robert. When we're talking okay. about uh, trauma, yeah, see, traumas can be, uh, you know, acute or chronic. And what is the value of therapy versus, you know, mitigating that acute stress that's arising from acute trauma? How do you know which, uh, you know, which path do we need to tread on? Um. The way so so you basically you're asking where do I decide where I need to focus on whenever I'm working with trauma? Am I correct? Yeah, yeah. So okay. see, there could be two approaches. Either I could take up the therapy approach, or I could just go into the mitigation of stress and survival mode, right? So, so how do we decide yes. where to apply what? Well, what I what I like to do is whenever I have a client come in who is suffering from trauma, one of the first things I like to do before we address their initial trauma is to help mitigate the symptoms of that trauma, uh, any physical sensations, anxieties, and get people to a place that they're more able to, to do the work to readdress that trauma. And the work done to readdress trauma normally involves uh, regression work to be able to readdress that event. It's not age regression itself, where you actually are first person experiencing the event. It's more of an external experience uh, that we are able to, outside of that initial mental state that I was talking about originally, how we stay in the mental and emotional state that we were when we were traumatized. Uh, mm -hmm. with hypnosis, you take them to a relaxed state, a logical, calm state where they can re-examine this trauma and not have the fear or degraded emotional intelligence from being so young and vice versa. Does this answer your question? Um, slightly. I like, was actually uh, more concerned about, you know, the value of therapeutic approach versus the value of uh, just mitigation of acute stress arising from trauma. Um, Can I just... Uh, uh, so, uh, Kirti, are you talking about from when, when you talk about, uh, are you talking about resolution versus suppression as in, as in, as in, let's say, CBT versus hypnotherapy? No, no, not at all. Not at all. Let's suppose, you know, I'm basically talking about trauma only. Now, trauma can be two types. One that is chronic in nature, one which is quite acu acute. Like suppose somebody, you know, uh, house burned down. Yesterday it happened and today the person has come to me. Versus a person who's, you know, had an accident like 
uh, years back and is still suffering. Oh, so right. there will be a difference in approach with dealing with these two people. Oh, okay. Right. Okay. okay. Fair I understand the question now. Yeah. Excellent. Um, yes. Yes, there would be a different approach because the with the person whose traumatization is older, there are many things that can become habit the that this their their sense of normal has had a chance to kind of adapt to this situation whereas a more acute recent trauma um you are still dealing with some very hot fresh emotions and there is something to be said about the mitigation from catching it early because you help them move through that process you can guide them through the grieving process and through all of those stages whereas with the old trauma you have years of possibly unhealthy ways they've been dealing with the trauma views that they've had there's more to unpack with the old trauma whereas when it's new you're dealing with more hot emotions but you are dealing with clearer emotions harder to look back at old things generally than something that just happened. But does that better address your question? Yeah, yeah. Excellent. Thank you. Good, good. Thank you. All right. So uh, I will be taking questions again after we, we go through the guided meditation. So if anyone has any more questions for me, just hang on to those until afterwards. And so now, the fun part. <laughs> If I could just get everyone to get into a comfortable position and just for here for a moment, all I want you to do is focus on your breathing. Just breathing in through your nose for a count of four and out through your mouth for a count of four. I want you to make sure that each breath in Lasts just as long as each breath out, vice versa, and the one before that. And now, because there are a group of you, I want you to begin by closing your eyes. Because from this moment onwards, you can imagine that I'm talking to you and to you alone. So if your eyes are not already closed, allow them now to gently rest and take a nice, long, slow, deep breath in through your mouth. Again, hold that breath for the mental count of four, and then exhale slowly out through your mouth, maintaining that same count of four. Allow your body to relax, release the tension you've been holding on to. Ensure that your feet are both flat on the floor and become aware of the surface beneath you now. You feel your feet perhaps becoming heavy, heavy, comfortable, and relaxed. Allow your hands possible to rest gently on your lap. Let them feel heavy, let them relax, and let go. And take another long, slow, deep breath. Hold it for four, and breathe out. Allow a sensation of calm and relaxation to flow down your body from the top of your head all the way down to the tips of your toes. Every nerve, every cell, every fiber. Relax and let go. And just take one more long, slow, deep breath. I want you to imagine, picture for ten little weights pulling down your lashes allowing your eyes to remain closed so that you can look up into the screen in your forehead and imagine the word relax, relax, and relax. 
Imagine you can see this voice or a shape or a color or a sign that can symbolize to you this word, this sensation of the left. And take that back and forth in your mind until it relaxes both the left and right lobes of the brain and allow that feeling to flow all the way through your body and let go. I would like you to perhaps imagine yourself at the top of a well-lit, secure stairwell. With your hand on the rail, feel yourself descending each step. Here and there it is dark. In other places, a color will flash through your mind. Become a bystander as you go down. See yourself stepping down. Feel yourself going deeper down. Know that your mind is still here, listening to and hearing whatever is said. And very soon, as you go deeper, you will become more and more relaxed receptive to the words that you hear. You are listening to me now because you have been through or know someone who has been through an experience that no one should ever had to have gone through. And as a result of this experience, you have suffered some undesirable side effects. You are aware that nothing anyone can say can change whatever it is, has, is that has happened to you. And it might seem as though no one can understand what you have endured, which is, in a way, perfectly correct. As we all respond to situations, as I said, in our own unique way. However, what I can do with your cooperation, of course, is to help you come to terms with what has happened and realize that you are a survivor rather than a victim. And even though it's been difficult to believe at the moment, you do have a future that is a very bright one at that. Possibly feel that you have hit rock bottom. And if so, perhaps you see the only place you have to go is up. But you have your part to do too. I am not a magician. And unfortunately, I just can't wave a magic wand and make it go away. You must help as well. You must accept the help that is offered to you. Your imagination is your most powerful asset. And it is vital that you channel it in a positive direction. If you don't do this, then negativity can take hold try to lead you back to that downward path. So, I want you to harness your imagination as you would, perhaps, with a horse, pulling the reins now and again when necessary, especially when you need to change direction or shout when you need it to stop. Horses are beautiful, faithful creatures, and they instinctively know their way back home. They can lead you on wild adventures and take you back to the safety that you crave. And as I'm sure you are aware, the most important thing you can do, as I've said, is talk openly and honestly to people who care about you and tell them how you are feeling. After all, people may think you are coping well. But they cannot see what is going on in your mind. Or your body. So if they think you're all right, they probably don't want to risk talking about the event in case it reminds you. Trauma survivors can experience a wide range of emotions. These could include fear, or anger, lack of confidence, feeling that nothing in life is worth it anymore. We have several tools our work box that can help. It's important that you find the one that suits you, so I will describe a few different ones. These are techniques 
that you can use when you need them. For example, you experience a panic attack, a flashback, outbursts of anger, or episodes of sadness. Perhaps you have been experiencing these episodes of sadness or anger. So I want you to go inside and locate those feelings. Where do you feel them? Are they in your abdomen, your heart, your head, or somewhere else in your body? Get in touch with these feelings now. Give them a name. Assign them a color. What color would you think that anger or sadness is? We give those feelings a shape. They could be hard and prickly, or maybe they feel like a heavy brick in that area of your body. It could be that those feelings are slimy like jelly or like rubber or putty or something else, perhaps jagged or sharp. Use your imagination to form your own personal impression of those feelings. Feel the weight and the shape, perhaps even a sound. If so, notice it now as I'm quiet for a moment or two. That's good. And now, you've located these feelings, I wonder if you can imagine that there is more than one, that they're fusing together in one single mass. And as you notice that feeling in its position in your body, I want you to try and find if you can move it. Perhaps it moves easily and smoothly, or it might need a bit of a push. But I want you to move that mass feeling to another area of your body. Feel it moving to your right shoulder, at the top of your arm, and then slowly working down the arm. Feeling moving down your right arm, past your wrist, into your hand. Hold it there in the palm of your hand. And when you can feel it there, when you can feel that weight, that shape, that color, perhaps even temperature, perhaps even a sound, bend your fingers and thumb around the object. Just hold it in your right hand. This object, your right hand, represents unwelcome feelings you have been experiencing since that trauma occurred. And now it is time to get rid of those feelings. So in a moment, I'm going to ask you to release them by opening your right hand and blowing or throwing them away, sending them where they deserve to be. You are ready to be free of those negative feelings. Allow your fingers Relax, release them when I say the word. Now, now, get rid of those unwanted feelings. You can invite them and they have no right to be in your body. Blow them away, throw them away, eliminate them once and for all. Let go right now. And as you blow or throw those feelings away, notice how your body may begin to feel lighter and freer as though a weight has been lifted. And a weight has been lifted off of you. It is gone. You are free to go on with the business of living in the now. And those negative feelings fade and disappear. And as they do, imagine you are surrounded by an aura of positive golden energy. It consists only of calm and peaceful feelings, feelings of peace, tranquility, as you realize the past is past. You cannot change it. You 
can only accept what has happened and make the decision to move on, to continue living a life that is free and worth living, a life full of courage, and compassion, and accumulated wisdom. Now perhaps you've been experiencing flashbacks returning to this moment. And I want to show you a way to dispel, reduce, maybe even eliminate those flashbacks and free yourself from this associated anxiety. Now think for a moment about whatever negative self-beliefs you have formed from your experience and rate them on a scale of one to 10. Perhaps you felt as though you could have done more or maybe you felt as though you had failed or let someone down. Now, I want you to choose a new positive self-belief that better represents how you would like to feel. And again, select a number from one to 10 that represents how true you believe this to be. And now, I'd like you to pick a specific picture from a scene or a target event that best represents how you feel about your negative belief. And now picture that scene in your mind as you take some deep, comfortable breaths, breathing in, holding for a full count, and breathing out. And each time you exhale, your body can relax more and more. And as you see the image in your mind, and as you breathe deeply, I want you to open and close your eyes several times as you do this. Seeing this event in your mind, Opening your eyes with each inhale, closing them with each inhale. Keep breathing steadily in and out. Good. Now, keeping your eyes closed now, I want you to blank that scene from your mind and focus on your positive self-belief. Good. Now, make a mental note in your head using the scale of 1 to 10, how true the negative belief is to you now. This number has it reduced. Just repeat this exercise several times. And you can move to another picture of this event, a new perception your own positive tools. Now, I'd like you to create a screen in your mind, like a movie. And on that screen, I would like you to project a still image of one of these memories that continues to hurt you. You might like to break down this memory into small chunks and rate each of them on that scale of 1 to 10, depending on how much they bother you. A rating of 1 would mean it hardly bothers you at all. A rating of 10 would be most traumatic. And when you come to view this screen in your mind, I want you to be aware that you are standing some distance away, as though you were watching an event from afar, or it was happening to someone else. And as you go through your memories of that event, I want you to know and to understand that you are completely safe and distanced from any negative emotions. And at no time do you feel as though you are back there. And I repeat, you are completely safe in watching this screen from a distance. Whatever you see, feel, or hear cannot 
will not affect you in the same way it did in the past. Notice how you are holding onto a remote control so that if any time you need or want to stop watching this screen, all you need to do is press pause or stop and the images, sounds, emotions, and memories will disappear. Now, when you are ready, I want you to press go or play on your remote and watch and listen as that event commences. And as this plays out, allow the safety and the relaxation where you are to keep you calm and safe. You're doing very well. Now I want you Rewind this scene very quickly in your mind and go back to the beginning when the screen was blank. Now, as you look at this screen, I want you to notice how there are ropes that are attached to the screen and to you. These ropes have been binding that unpleasant memory to you. And soon, very soon, we are going to free you any negative emotions associated with that painful event. So, I want you to press play again, but this time when you watch what happened, notice perhaps how the colors are dimmer, the sound muffled, and the negative feelings perhaps diminished. And now, I would like you Look to the side of you in this place. Notice, picture, pretend. There is an implement, a pair of scissors, a knife, whatever you see that will help you cut through those ropes. When you see it, pick it up and begin to cut through these ropes. And the moment cut through the very last piece of thread. Notice how the screen begins moving backward, away from you. It is moving further and further away. The sound so quiet and so muffled. The image barely visible now. And the feelings so minute and so far away. And in a moment, as it goes, the screen will totally disappear, and there it is gone. The screen has completely gone, and with it, those memories. Allow yourself to be free from the negative feelings and emotions that have bothered you so much. Yes, you know that the event happened, and you cannot change history, but you have freed yourself and the painful reminders, and negative feelings. And now, it's time to move on. Move on and up. Bring back the screen now and see it's totally clean. And on this screen, I want you to place an image of yourself as a person who has healed no longer a victim of the past, but a survivor, and as such, strong, plenty to look forward to. See yourself surrounded by the people you love, and who love you back. See how you are surrounded by new opportunities. You might even move the image into the future, and notice what you will be doing, and how you will be thriving in two, three years' time. Make plans for the future, knowing that everything will work out for the best. And now, notice this in this future, you are sitting on a horse. It's your horse, a beautiful, faithful creature, and you hold the reins. You are stable and comfortable and able to direct this horse to wherever you wish to go. You are 
fully able to harness your emotions and channel your energy into productive activities and a happy and fulfilling life. Your horse is ready to begin its journey. You are ready and it's time to go. I'll be quiet for one more moment now. And in this silence, allow your subconscious mind to identify all the resources you need for your new adventure in life. And in a moment, I will count the numbers from one to five. And at the count of five, you will open your eyes, fully alert, awake, and refreshed. One, two, three, coming slowly back. Four, eyelids becoming lighter, perhaps even flickering. And five, eyes open, wide awake, fully back into conscious awareness of the world around you. Excellent. Everyone just take a moment, breathe and relax, shake anything off, become integrated to the world around you. Does anyone have anything they would like to share or ask based upon what just happened? Anyone at all? Everyone awake still? Did that put anyone to sleep? <laughs> Any questions at all? Any comments on your experiences? Please feel free to share, elaborate. I would love to hear from any of you. Anything? You are all so quiet. <laughs> it's very relaxing. <clears throat> Excuse I, me? I'm, it's very, very relaxing. I'm feeling so fresh after doing this session. I can't tell you. I'm feeling like I, I should go to bed and have a good sleep. That's excellent. I'm not able to do very good so many days. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That, uh, you're, you're very welcome. Uh, so relaxation is key to being able to healthily process any emotion. We need that relaxation and that calm to be able to rationally work through any problem in life, be it good, bad, severe, or not. So thank you very much for sharing that. Does anyone else have anything they would like to say? Robert Arthi has a question. She says, how do we hold on to this relaxed feeling? <laughs> um, well, there are many ways. The, the, the handout that I had, had goes over the breathing technique that I use. And that is actually a physiological thing that happens. The breathing that I took you through the breathe in for four, breathe out for four, making sure that everything stayed in that rhythm. Once you maintain that rhythm of breathing, your heart and brain waves go into something called synchronous alpha, which the alpha waves of your brain are what cause relaxation. It, they, they are, they're that mental calm. And as you stabilize into that breathing, then you, you return to this state of synchronous alpha, where you are calm, your heart rate is slowed down. Um, so that would be the, the best way to maintain it. Uh, of course, there's also the option of meditative practices. Uh, there is hypnotherapy. Um, hypnotherapy is a way that um, these, these feelings can be kind of locked in through associative anchors. Uh, we call them post-hypnotic suggestions. Um, so I hope that answers your question at all. Uh, Deepika, I hope I said your name right. Yeah, that's right, Robert. 
Um, my question is that sometimes the trauma uh, that has happened to the patient has come from the family itself, from a person in the family, very close. And you take the person back. Um, there's one method that we have been taught is, you know, how you clear up things through hypnosis and you make the forgiveness happen between the two souls. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, sometimes what happens is that the patient still manages to recall the trauma. Perhaps the trauma has been too much. Yes. In that case, what is the next best thing that can be done? Well, memory is a very odd thing. Um, I, as I like to say, memory isn't just malleable. Memory is plastic. Um, our recollection of events is not accurate. It's the reason that witness testimony is one of the worst types of evidence you can have. Ten different people remember thing, ten, things ten different ways, and a month later, later they'll remember it a different way. So in that case, and that situation, I would attempt to guide the perception of the memory to something different, to focus on something different. And it's, it's a very difficult situation whenever the source of the trauma is family, because normally we could get away from what traumatizes us, but when it is someone close to us that causes this, there are difficulties that come up because you are exposed to that constantly. And as to exactly what I would advise doing, that's a difficult answer because we are all so very different. And every traumatic event to every individual is very different. So as to how exactly I would go about that, really depends on the situation itself. So I hope that answered your question. Um, Anyone else? Oh, go ahead. Um, I, would, I would want to put it as the fact that, uh, yes, you know, people have different kind of memories, different kind of mm -hmm. recollections. But in the family, uh, when you know that you still have to interact with the concerned person, again, perhaps for a, for a good number of years, the recollection sometimes for the patient becomes uh, painful still. Maybe that process is not complete. Well, what I'm saying is the recollection itself is then altered. That instead of the subconscious associations to the recollection being focused on the aspects of the memory that are painful, Yes. You can change the, the subconscious associations to a benign aspect because what we view as, uh, thank you, Monica, what we view as important in a memory is that association. And if that association can be changed, then the perception of the memory could be changed. And in that instance, that really is one of the most important tools you can give them because if the perception itself is not changed because the, the traumatic memory is so close, they will continue to re-experience the memory. What exactly do you mean when you say that you can change the association? That is uh, hypnotherapy. Yeah. That is, the, def that is the, the, the very definition of it. Everything in life is association so for example for a traumatic memory our associations would be with the pain and with the if there is an individual the traumatizing individual hmm. where and the, the reason we choose that is because hmm. that's our subconscious association but okay. if the association was instead focused upon uh something else involving that memory a less traumatizing or not traumatizing aspect of that. For example, if, if there was a, a conflict that was particularly 
frightening or traumatizing instead of focusing on the words of this conflict perhaps mm -hmm. upon recall of that memory instead of the association with the conflict you remember the way the rug looked that that is what stands out in your head more than the words or the pain that this is where your subconscious goes and okay. there are uh, anchors that can be used for that be them sure. smell words whatever have you hmm. so that would be the best way i would feel to go about that because normally normally we're separate from our trauma but when it's someone close it's right there so tools must be given to either dampen that memory or i'll make it easier to live with okay so what i'm trying to understand here is maybe make the patient recollect the better times of the relationship? Is that what you're saying? It really depends on the memory and everything involved. It's a very tricky question to answer because there's so many variables involved in what the exact of the client's situation is. Um, so there's not really going to be a one specific thing that Answer. i can really hold up as an example because of the wide variety of flavors that trauma comes in you know what i mean okay yeah got it got it thank you very much for your question thank you is there any more is there any more Robert, uh, i have a question what is the time in your watch right now <laughs> Six twenty-eight in the morning <laughs> okay so uh so right, so I'm guessing you, it is uh, time for uh, way past time for bed. So, but it's uh, <laughs> hopefully it's a good thing. It's a weekend. So uh, oh, I already took a nap. I'm fine. I planned for this. <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. So anyway, so guys, uh, Robert is uh, is uh, available for consultations and sessions, including group sessions and all of that. So if you have any other questions you'd like to talk to him about in the context of trauma or anything else that uh, where you think you'd like to do with some help, uh, he's on Facebook, I've tagged him and uh, his handout is available where you can contact him through his email and so on and so forth. Robert, thank you so much for taking the time out to come over and talk to us. And uh, we're looking forward to Have your, you. whenever you choose to spend time with us at five in the morning again. <laughs> Anytime. <laughs> it, it was fun. Thank you very much, guys. It was Thanks very so much, nice everyone. For everyone. Coming. Thank you. If ever, anyone, I'm still going to be awake probably for another hour. If anyone has any questions, uh, Look me up on Facebook at J. Robert Parker or Twin Ravens Hypnotherapy. Go to my website, it's twinravens.org. Fill out a contact form. I'll happily answer everyone's questions. Everyone, you're very, very welcome. Uh, it was great meeting you all, great talking to you all, and I'll see you around. Bye, guys. Naveen, that uh, that uh, if if you go to the if you go to the community healers uh, page on uh, the group on Facebook, there I have already uh, posted a one page uh, handout that Robert has uh, shared uh, as as a as supplemental material for this session. You'll find the if you just go and take a look at all my posts. Uh, the last post I made has this flyer, and I'll also be uploading uh, the link for uh, recording of this session, YouTube link, I'll be updating that post with it in a bit. Does that answer your question, I mean? Ah, okay, cool. Achinji, you're getting the next week? Right. 23rd. Gee, I, I saw that you had uh, you had uh, scheduled a session. How's your arm doing? Much better. Much better. It's still doing better. It 
पेन्स ऐसा नहीं है कि बिल्कुल ठीक है सो सो मे बी एक बीच सो मे बी वी शुड डू लिटिल मोर फ्रीक्वेंटली लिटिल मोर फ्रीक्वेंटली मैंने एवरी टू थ्री डेज एवरी टू अभी दो दिन मे बी देन दैट विल बी लिटिल मोर बेरेबल कोई फर्क नहीं पड़ता ना आपको क्या करना है आपको तो बस बैठना है ट्वेंटी थर्ड से पहले कर ले as you wish but i'm just saying that if you do it more this thing na and uh, and uh, and if you be a little uh, uh, let me call you okay talking to you ji ji you take care bye bye i'm closing now bye